Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayaimi Gitin Samach. We are on Nud Tesamet Beis on the very last line. Shalchole b'neik lila l'rabi chelboi. Some individuals from the Golil area in Eretz Yisrael up north sent a question in Halacha to Rabbi Chelboi. Now, we already know that the Chachamim established a set um, order in terms of the Ali Yisla Torah. First comes a Kayin, then a Levi, followed by a Yisrael. But the question is, is there a specific order in terms of which Yisraelim will get priority in terms of their aliyahs going from number three all the way to number seven. Achareyami, who comes after the Kehanim and Levim? And Rashi says on top, Did we establish a specific system of hierarchy within the Israelim? Who are getting their aliyahs starting from number three till number seven? on account of Darke Sholem, to keep the peace and harmony. Is there a specific system? He had no response. He had no answer. So Rabbi Chelboi went on to ask the question to Rabbi Yitzhak Nafcha, is there any specific order in terms of who gets the Aliyahs after the Kehan and Leviyah? So he responded, certainly, there is a very specific order established by the Chachamim. Achrayan, after the Kayan and Levi, Kayan Halmide Chachamim, Hamemunin Parnosim al So the next uh, uh, ones will be the Tamid Chachamim, who are appointed as leaders on the, in the community. Achrayan, after them come Tamid Chachamim, who are Uyin, Lemonoisim Parnosim al We have Tamid Chachamim, who perhaps in terms of their stature, and scholarship are suitable candidates to be leaders, to be chosen as leaders, but they're actually not leaders. They're just Tamid Chachamim. So they go next. And then come Vachreim B'nei Tamid Chachamim. Shav is saying Memunim Parnosim al Then come the sons of the first group of Tamid Chachamim who are and communal leaders, so their children come next. Rachreyan, and of course this is on account of the covet of their of their fathers who uh, occupy a leadership com- you know position in the community. After which come Rachreyan, Rashik Nusiyas come the those that are running the affairs of the shul and the tzedakos, and then come your ordinary citizens we call Adam. So it's a very specific order in order to maintain peace and harmony in the shul and avoid machlikas. Next question. We want to know what if a shul decides to, instead of use a full, using a full Sefer Torah, they have chumashim. Now, Rashi, of course, explains, was speaking about uh, parchment, chumashim. So instead of having a full Sefer Torah with all five sections, Bereshit, Shmais, Vayikra, and so on, we have um, one roll of parchment which contains only Bereshit or contains only Shmais. Is that okay for use for Kriya Satayr in a Beis HaKnesis? Well, I have a Biyadi. He had no response to this question. Also, Shaili, the Rabbi Yitzchak Nafcha, he forwarded the question to Rabbi Yitzchak Lab Yadi, he had no response. Also, Shel Bey Medrash, he came to ask the question in the Beis HaMedrash. Pashtua, Mahadar Mshmo, Barachmeni, Amri Yechanan, or Amar Yenison, and they responded uh, based on the Alocha, which was taught by Rabbi Yenison. Sefer Torah Shechaser, Giriya Achas, Ein Kerem, but you're meant to know that if I said Sefer Torah is missing even one section of parchment, you cannot use it for Kriya Satayra. And certainly in this case, where to begin with, it only has Barashas or Shemois or Vayikra. Of course, it cannot be used for Kriyasat Torah. Says the Marvaloi, but perhaps not. Perhaps it's not really a true comparison. It's not a match. There it's worse. 
because it's supposed to be more. Ha'asam mechshar b'milsei. If it was meant to be a full say for Torah, b'milsei in its reality, in its intended form, it, it's missing. I'm missing a section. So it's not kosher. Ha'chalei mechshar b'milsei, but here it's merely meant to be a chumash to begin with. That's exactly what it is. So perhaps it can be used. However, Rabbi Rav Yisif, they both contend the Amrit Havayu ain't kaidan the Chumashin beisakneses. Although, perhaps you can contemplate that it's kosher, but we don't allow it. Mishum kavod tzibur. It's it doesn't lend respect to the tzibur. It appears like they can't afford more, so we don't get involved with just the chumash. Furthermore, Rabbi Rav Yosef. The Amri Tavai, they both taught us high sefer aftarta. Suppose you have a a sefer, a parchment, in which all you have are the haftoyres. Instead of a full, you know, navi or nach, you have just that specific section of navi which you're going to read as the haftoyre after Kriyas HaTorah. Also, le mikrei You may not read it. From it on Shabbos and Shul. My time. Why can't you read from it? Because it's not meant to be written this way. You're meant to write a full Sefer Navi rather than just picking sections. Mavra Rashi Omar, he takes it a step further. Asur little tulebe. Asur little Sorry, sorry. Mavra Rashi Omar, little tuleb nami. Asur. Just as you can't read it, you're not even allowed to move it on Shabbos. It's Muktzah. My time of why? Because you can't use it for reading. So it's Muktzah. It has no function. Veloi says the Gemara, it's not so. Shari le Tatulai, le Mikrubei. It can be handled, it can be read from. In fact, we have a Raya. The Rabbi Yechnon. The Rabbi Shimon Lakish, both of them, Ma'aini, they would use, they would read from. Besifra da Gadtava Shabbos. From a sefer that contained Agadis, which is Medrashim Teresh Peh, even though it was recorded in a sefer, and we know that in those days Teresh Bechsav was meant to be recorded, but not the oral Torah, and still they would use it. The question is, Valinit in the concept, but how can they use it if it's not meant to be written? Teresh Peh, it's not meant to be recorded in writing. Oh, apparently the hertel was because the the circumstances compelled it. Rashi says, "Shenusmai talev, v'atayr mishta kachas." You know, our intellectual abilities shrunk, our memories waned. And as such, the Chachamim instituted a hetter to write down everything, even Torah Shabbal Peh. Eis lasas l'Hashem, when it's the time to do for Hashem, hey, fear of Sechel, even do things which appear like they seem to be negating an aspect of the Torah's stipulations, i.e., we write down Torah Shabbal Peh if necessary. Hachanam, here as well, says the Gemara, when it comes to writing a half Torah on a parchment without writing the entire uh, Sefer, a partial recording is also fine when necessary. Since we don't have a choice, Rashi explains, what's the problem here? Not every community can afford to write a full Sefer Navi. So we make exception. And that's the conclusion that one might even use. A partial nach for hafter. A new question on this topic of recording the Torah. Ma lichtev megila. May one write just a, a section of chumash on a parchment latinic lislamid ba, so that the child can use it, can learn from it. Is that okay? Even though you're you're not really writing the Torah in its true form, the you know full chumash or the full save, you know save Torah. Is that okay? Can one record partial Torah Shebechzav? Now, this question can be posed according to the opinion that holds Torah. How is Torah 
recorded way back originally in the Midbar by Moshe Rabbeinu. Megillah, Megillah Nitna. It was given section by section. As it happened, it was recorded. So as the events took place, um, sections were added to the Sefer Torah until it was fully completed at the end of the journey through the Midbar. That's one opinion. Megillah, Megillah Nitna. And also our question with the Katan can be posed according to the other shit that holds that Torah was given as one unit. According to this shita, as the events were unfolding in the Midbar, Moshe Rabbeinu kept it in mind, but it was never really recorded on parchment until he was ready to do the entire Torah as one at the end of the 40 years. Chasuma, sealed as one unit. Explains the Gemara. I have a question regarding writing just a small section, which we call Megillah. For the sake of the katan, it can be posed according to the first shita that Torah originally was given section by section. You can say, look, give on the Megillah Megillah Nitna. Since it was originally given as sections, Kaisin that allows us to write sections as well. It conforms to the format of the Torah the way it was given originally. It's not considered, you know, a deviation. Or you can say no. You can argue, give on the idvak. Once the Torah was put together, all sections were sort of put together at the end of the 40 years, idvuk, that's it, it's glued together, it's stuck together as one unit and is no longer separable. So that's one way to look at it. The same question can be posed according to the other sheet, which is of the opinion that the Torah initially was given as one unit at the end of this 40 year journey, since it was given as one package. We shouldn't be allowed to break it up and write just sections at a time. Or you can say, since it's not always feasible for every person to write a full, you know, chumash for the for the child's learning. Um, you know, Kasvinos, that would allow us to do that based on the idea of so this was a question from Abaya to Rabba. Amrle he responded, "No, in Kaisvin, one may not write individual parshes uma atam, and the reason is for Shein Kaisvin because you're not supposed." To. <laughs> it sounds a little bit um, poetic, but basically what he's saying is, ultimately the Torah took on a new form. It's one unit. Whether the Torah was Megillah Megillah didn't know, Chasuma didn't know, it's irrelevant. But today we have one unit, inseparable, and indivisible. Eisve. But now, Abai had a kasha to Rabba. We tell him you can't divide, you can't section it. This is going back to Hilni Amalka, who donated certain items in the Mesa Migdosh, including the golden tablet on which was inscribed the Pesukim necessary for the Saita process in the Mesa Migdosh. Shaparashas Saita Ksuvaleo. Here we go. Individual psukim, an individual section, was recorded separately. Amar Pshimon Lakish from Yanai. No, no, no. The Aleph base was written in you know cryptic form. The Rashi Tevis, you know, first letter of every word, but it wasn't written out in detail, and that's okay. Eisvei. See, as the Makasha, but the Bryce explains that it was written out. Word for word, when the Kayan writes those psukim on the parchment, which eventually will be, you know, um, immersed in water, which will give him to drink to, give him to drink to the Saita. How does he know what to write? Roya, he peers uh, at the uh, golden tablet and he copies it. Apparently, the tablet had all the words written out. Let's. Uh, Interpret it. Come on. He takes the uh, indication from the tavla, from the Rosh Tevas, as to what to write. But it wasn't actually spelled out on the tavla. Eisei, we have another kasha. Shukaisev, raya batavla. Lukaisev, mashukazev batavla. The Bryce clearly tells us that he's just cut and pasting. He's copying straight off the tavla. Apparently, it was spelled out on the tavla. Maukasev batavla. What does it say on the tavla? Imzgan shachav, imlay shachav, all the psukim. Answers the Gemara. My skin was speaking with Seirugim. 
that it was written in short form. So, you know, the first couple of words of the Pesukim were written out, but then it went on to uh, just, um, you know, encrypting it as uh, Rashi Teves, and, um, and that's it. It didn't really spell out the entire, the entire Pesukim. So, uh, if you don't really have it done properly, that's not called, you know, recording a parsha. A couple of words, a couple of letters, that's okay. Kitanoi, the more will not bring a machlekes in this regard. Whether or not one may record individual sections of the Torah. One may not write a separate section for the Tinuk to learn. But, if he intends, if he plans on finishing the entire Chumash, that's okay. Sometimes he can do it. And even leave it like that. Things which are considered, you know, separate sections within the Torah. Be voracious. In Chumash voracious, you can record from the beginning of Bereshus, until the uh, story of the Doramabal. So basically that first uh, part of the Chumash discussing the creation of the world, that stands alone, that can be recorded separately. Another example, Bataris Kahanam, which is Parshas Vayikra. You can write from the beginning of the Sefer, Ad until Parsha Shmini. So that first section, Parshas Vayikra, Parshas Tzav, details all the uh, Instructions regarding carbonates, that's a standalone individual topic which can be recorded separately. So here you go, it's a is on this question. Om Rabbi Yechna, okay, let's go back to that uh, question which the Gemara alluded to regarding how the Torah was initially given. How was it recorded? Om Rabbi Yechna, Mishum Rabbi Bena, Torah Megila Megila Nitna. The Torah was given in sections. So as the events transpired in the Midbar, Moshe Rabbeinu would record it and add another section, another section, Shanemar, as we find that Davar HaMelech and Tehillim relates to the Torah, refers to it as Megillah. Oza Marti, Hine Bosi, Megillah's Sefer Kasev Rashi brings the whole story that uh, Davar HaMelech we know came from Brus HaMoyavia, even though she was from Moyav, but we allowed it because uh, the ban was only on the male mayavim, not on the female mayaviyos. And David Melech explains that it was hinted to in the Torah, because by the Benois Loit, who were the matriarchs of Amon and Moyav, we have the words Hanim Tzois, and in the Tehillim we have Motsasi David Avdi. So uh, the Torah hints to the eventual birth of David Hamelach. Bottom line is David Melech refers to the Torah as Megillah. Right? So that's the uh, source for this idea that Torah was given in sections. Rabbi Shimon Lagash Aymer, he disagrees. Torah chasuma nitma. When the Torah was recorded, it was only in its full, complete form. Shinamar, the Pasuk says, Lo koyach, a sefer. Ha Torah hazois. So we see from here that... Um, you know, that the term Sefer Torah only refers to a full Sefer Torah. This was at the end of the 40 years when he finished writing all the Parshios. Now he calls it Sefer Torah. What does Rabbi Yechonah do with this Pasuk? Which indicates that it's only considered a Sefer Torah once it's full and complete. Well, I would have said the Idbuk. Show is complete. Because all the different pieces of parchment were now connected. So, of course, they were written incrementally as the events were transpiring, but ultimately, once the 40 years were up, Moshe Rabbeinu completed the entire Sefer Torah, joined together all these sections, and now we call it Sefer. Sefer Torah is it. That's not to say that it wasn't recorded individually until this point. What does the other sheet to do with the Lashon Megillah? which David HaMelech mentions, It's true, the entire Torah, as a section, as a, as a unit. Forget sections, the entire Torah is sometimes referred to as Megillah as well. It's not indicative of sections or, or units. This is by Zechariah. So he referred to the Torah as Megillah. And... Uh, it's unrelated to sections or units. Inami. 
another way to answer this question. Now, even though the Torah was given as one unit, but still, the Lashon Megillah is fitting. You know why? Look at Rab Levi. Uh, Rab Levi. Shmoina Parshis. You meant you meant to know that there were eight Parshis, eight sections in the Torah. Namru, which were dictated and recorded by Yem Shokan by Mishkan on the day that the Mishkan was erected, because all these eight parshas were pertinent for that day. So, bottom line is that those sections were, in fact, written and recorded at that point as separate units, because as we're going to see soon, these eight parshas are not situated next to each other in the Sefer Torah. So these were written separately, separate parchments, so to speak. And then, ultimately, when the Torah was completed and expanded, they had to go and write the section which belonged before this one and the one after it, before the next one. So basically, it came together in sections. All right. So again, these eight sections were written way back when the Mishkan was erected. But the rest of the Torah, all the other missing parts, were of course only recorded at the end of 40 years. But we call them Megillahs because they were put together as like, like a jigsaw puzzle. The pieces mixed in and, you know, ultimately joined together to create the full unit of Sefer Torah. What are these eight parshas? Elohim. Parshas Kehanim, right? The, the parsha discussing the specifics the uh, prohibitions, you know, for of the Kuhanim to, to remain tar, etc. etc. Pasha Slavim, discussing the Allah's Lavim, Pasha Tmeim. How the Tmeim can't bring the carbon Pesach, I need to wait to Pesach Shani because we have a Mishkan, they can't come in. Or Pasha Shloch Tmeim, all about uh, sending the Tmeim out of the uh, holy areas, or Pasha Zachary Mois. Right, discussing the Allah Savim Kippur, the Karbanis and how uh, the uh, children of Aaron Akayan passed away. The warning about, uh, you know, not entering the Beis um, Hamikdash without proper preparation. All those things were pertinent for that day. All about warning the Chayhanim not to come into Beis Hamikdash drunk. the Allah of the mitzvah of uh, kindling the menorah. Pashas Paraduma, and all about bringing the Paraduma, which was necessary at that point to be matir anybody who needed it, in anticipation of. The Karim Pesach. Amr Belazim. Torah, our Torah, which is partially Torah Shebech and partially Torah Shebech Alpeh. Torah Roi Bechsav. Most of the halachis were given in writing. Basically what it means is that you can draw many, many halachis, most halachis, from the actual uh, wording and, you know, the yukim and the lettering and the wording of the Torah. Umiut Alpeh. There is a small portion of halachis which cannot be you know, discerned and detected within the actual text of the Torah, but rather we have them through the halachal meishim esina. Shnemar, the pasuk says, "Ech tevli rubi teirasi k'moizar nechshavu." So most of the Torah is recorded in writing. Rabbi Yechon Amar, Rav Alpe, actually not. Mostly is Alpe. Umiyot b'ksav, only small portion can be learned from the actual text and wording. Shnemar. So the Pasuk is uh, indicating that the, uh, the, the bris, the Pasuk continues, Karasi the uh, main bond and connection and relationship between Hashem and us, relationship which is enhanced and solidified through learning Torah, through keeping Hashem's mitzvahs, is al pi hadvar me'ila. Torah al oral. Apparently, that takes, you know, center stage. That comprises most of the Torah. So what does the, the Shita do? What the Pasach, which indicates that most of it is in the actual written Torah. Just the opposite. That Pasach should be read as a sort of a question mark. How can I go ahead and record most of the Torah? To make it so readily available, Haloi Kumar Zen Nazar Nachshavu. Klaistral, very often, are like strangers to the Torah. I shouldn't say very often, but at times we are strangers to the Torah. In the sense that we don't always keep the mitzvahs of Torah. So it's sort of like a question mark. 
Am I really going to go and write them all down? Write most of it down? No. I'm going to leave it up in the air to be figured out. I'm not going to make it, you know, uh, so readily available. That's the uh, the point of the Pasuk there. Now the other sheet, Rabbi Lazar, what does he do with the Pasuk of Rabbi Yechna? Which indicates that Torah is primarily Alpe. So he says like this, not in terms of quantity, but in terms of quality and hardship and investment required to achieve that Torah. That's why it's regarded as primarily primarily Alpe, meaning the primary effort has to be invested. Much, much toil and effort and yigiyah and amelos has to be invested in order to acquire and achieve and be zoichat to Torah Ha'hu mishum de tkifu lemigmarinu. We're considering it as such because, you know, why is it that the the krisas bris relates to Torah Shabbat not because it's mostly hidden and mostly not on the, in, 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 in the indicative in the in the text. No, but rather because of the investment involved. It's so difficult to understand and to learn. That's why it's chashev. It's prominent, and on account of its prominence and its importance, it's chashev to be considered the ikar krisas bris, and an expression of that true commitment between Hashem and Klal Yisrael. So this uh, following drasha was taught by Rabbi Yudha Baruch who was Maturgim Mani, the, the announcer. Every, uh, many times the Rosh Hashiva had an announcer who would broadcast his words. So he was the Maturgim of the Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish, and apparently he was a Chacham in his own right. Ksiv, on the one hand we have the Pasuk, Ksiv Lachas Advar Record these words. Apparently, terror is meant to be recorded. Uksiv, and then we have a Pasuk, but it's not meant to be recorded. It's meant to be Teresh Baal Peh. Ki al pi advar me'ila. Al pi, right? At pi advar me'ila. Karatim chavris. Okay, so how does this work? It depends uh, on which part of Torah. Tabar Ram Shebech Sav. Things which were meant to be recorded. Iyata rasha ilayim ra peh. Those... Um, are meant to stay in writing. Not meant to be uh, transferred to Alpe. The Rosh Hashanah Alpe. At the same time, things which are meant to be Alpe handed down from Rebbe to Talmud orally. Iyata Rosh Hashanah Lo Imer Those are not meant to be learned uh, in writing. The Rebbe Shmuel Tana. The pastor says, "Kial Ksev Lecha Es Advarim Ha'Ela Ha'Ela Zadiuk Ela Ela Ata Kaisiv." Only these. These psukim are meant to be written down as opposed to halachis of Teresh Ideally, not meant to be recorded, but of course, as we learned before, Rashi brings it, because Torah was being forgotten. And that's where the Chachamim instituted this new uh, heter of recording and writing down Teresh al as well. And finally, Om Rabbi Yechanan, this fits with Rabbi Yechanan before, like Koras HaKadosh Baruch Hu Bris in Yisrael, El B'Shvot Varn Shabal Peh, the the Chris, the, the Bris, the bond, the true expression of our loyalty and relationship with Hashem is based on our commitment to learn Teresh Shabal Peh. Like Koras HaKadosh Baruch Hu Bris in Yisrael, El B'Shvot Varn Shabal Peh, Shanamra, Ki Al Piyad Varn Me'ila, on account of Teresh Shabal Peh, Karati Im Chabris Ves Yisrael, and how could we not mention the Medrash Tan Chuma, which explains the reason is because it's so difficult. Yesh Yesh Potzar Gadol, Ve'ain Loi Med Oisa. The only one that really invests time and effort and truly delves into Teresh Shabal Peh is, listen to this, Elamisha Oyev Hakadosh Baruch Hu B'Chalibay Nafshay Emoide. Medrash Tan Chuma, Parshas Noyach Peragimol. Beautiful. Okay. Ma'arvim abayis yoshan. Ipnei darkei sholem. So, on the list of darkei sholem takonis, we have the Erech Chatseris material, which was, had been placed in a certain, you know, a specific house. It's meant to stay there. You don't uh, move it to a different house. 
Ask because they're on my timer. What's the uh, why? Why is it so important? Ilayma mishum kavod. Is it because of uh, of kavod honor and respect of that balabai? You don't uh, take away the opportunity. It's been there. Leave it there. Says, well, really? You never move things around? The I have a story. I have a kash. A hoshi pura. So they used to use a shafer to uh, to uh, sound, you know, the horn on Erev Shabbos, indicating that Shabbos is arriving. Where was the shafer placed? In the house of the Rosh Hashiva. But it was moved around. As per need. Initially, where was it? Avimi Kora Bera Yehuda. It was in Ravida's home when he was the Rosh Hashiva. And then when he uh, passed away and and the rabbi took over. It went over to Rabbi's house. So the shefer was moved around from Rosh Hashiva to Rosh Hashiva. We didn't insist that it stays with the original family. So why is uh, the air of different? Oh, here it's more serious because when one is accustomed to seeing the air of material sitting in this home, in this address, and suddenly it's not there, that might, might arouse a a chashad, suspicion in his eyes that, look, there's no Erev, and people are caring. That can create machlekes. Continues the Gemara. Another item relating to Dark Yishon. So you have, you know, a river flowing into the Amma, the irrigation ditches, which feeds all the fields. So the field closest to the, uh, to the Amma, he fills his uh, boyer first. Itmar, we have a discussion regarding many related scenarios. Pnei Nahara. So you have many uh, farmers who are drawing from the uh, river. And you have people that are upstream, people that are downstream. Which one has a right to uh, water his field first? is Rabbi Shmuel. Rabbi Amar Tatoi. Shasu. My Barisha. The ones uh, lower down have a right to feed their Water their fields first. Shmuel Amar, no, Eloi, the upper ones. Shosu Mayabresha, they drink first. Now the Gemara explains. But the Maisel, if the uh, river is just flowing naturally, in its natural course, without tinkering, without you know damming it or diverting it, it's just flowing down river. downstream. Kuliamoloi Pligi, nobody uh, is going to have any uh, question that, uh, yeah, the upper ones, uh, you know, can water their... Uh, there's no, there's no uh, seder, there's no uh, set system. Anybody can draw, anybody can take, no problem. Just let it run its natural course. Keep leaky. The question will be if somebody's trying to tinker with the, um, with the um, river. There's a need to divert or to place a temporary dam. The mischar, mischar means to put a, a dam. Vashkuyi and irrigate your field in that manner. Now comes the question. The upper ones are claiming they have a first right to do that. The low ones are claiming, let it go. Let it come to us, naturally. The ones upstream have a right to do that first. Why? We're closer up to the top. The Amri, Anan, Makarvin, Look, we're closer up to the, uh, the top of the river. We, uh, we go first. And then we'll, uh, we'll let the uh, river go and um, flow down to you. Rav claims that the... Uh, Rav contends that the uh, ones uh, downstream have a right to irrigate their field first. Let it come to us first. Let us water our field, and then you can do what you want up, upstream and block it and stop it. Why? Because they're claiming, look, let it go naturally. The Amri in Nahara can push the laser. Let the river just run its course. Interesting, Machlek. It's Tanan. So let's take a look at our mission, which says, Boy, Rakar of the Amma, it's Malarishan. So we have an Amma, which is basically uh, an irrigation ditch drawing from the uh, river. And uh, the ones that are closer up to the source, they can fill their burr first. That will be a riot to Hushita, to, to Shmuel. Says the more Tirgim of Shmuel. So Shmuel came and he uh, sought to answer this question and to interpret it in a way that is consistent with Rav as well. So he came to answer Rav. I'll leave it with Rav. Here it's different. Here, he, he's not diverting. 
He's not blocking the flow. He's not tinkering with the river. We're speaking that the water is sort of running right near his burr and just flowing right into it. He's not doing any action to divert the river. So of course he gets first pick. Of course he gets first rights. It's just, it's just a natural flow. So one second. So that's very different than our situation where they're damming and diverting and blocking. Perhaps that's different. Here it's just a natural flow. If that's the case, then why even discuss it? Of course, why shouldn't he get the water first if it's just flowing in on its own? Perhaps Perhaps I would say that the fellows on you know, downstream can turn to the fellow upstream. Don't, don't allow the uh, river to flow into your pit and uh, slow down the flow. Block your pit. Block your burr. Block the, the river from going into your bar. Ba'ashki And, um, you know, just draw like us. You know, pails, whatever it is. Don't uh, divert all that water. Don't allow the water to be diverted. Kamash want the Chiddush is no. He's not doing any anything to, to uh, divert the water. So therefore, he has a right to have the water fill up his bar first. Omar vunmar ta'chlifa hashto. So we have this big question here. Can the upper ones divert? Or do they have to allow the lower ones to get their water supply first? And we have no conclusion. Not like Rav or Shmuel. So how do we uh, proceed? Call the Olam Gavar. <laughs> Whoever wins the case wins it. Meaning they fight it out. Call the Olam. Whoever is stronger, more powerful, he wins the case. To toss up. So that was a more interesting story involving Rav Simi Barashi, who approached Abaye to learn with him Mechav Rusa. Also, come with Abaye. Amrle, he tells him, "Look, Abaye, I would like to learn with you. Please, uh, can you uh, give me some time? Lois van Mar, please sit me down with you. Be idna at a set time to learn Mechav Rusa." Amrle, so Abaye says, "I can't. I'm busy. Isli idna lidi. I'm busy learning myself." Okay, but Lois van Mar, what about sitting at night and learning with me? Amrle, Isli mai lashkuya. At night, I'm busy irrigating my field. Um, he says, you know what? I offer you a deal. I'll spend my time uh, during the day watering your field, getting that out of, you, out of your way, and uh, you'll have time for me at night. You sit with me at night and learn. Sabai says, sure, deal. So what did he do? In order to get uh, quick, easy access to the water, apparently there were fields all around who were vying for this water supply. So now, let's remember, Abayi's field was right in the middle of the mountain, midstream. So if Simi went to the upper ones, farmers on top, you know the ones downstream had a right to get their water first. So leave it alone for now. And then he went back to the ones on bottom, and he told them the same thing. He says, Rabbi said, back off for the time being. The ones upstream had a right to take their water for first. So everybody pulled back. And the water started flowing. Adahachi, as this was happening, Sachar Miskar. So he dammed, he blocked, he diverted the river into Abayas field, the Ashki, and he watered the field. One, two, three. He also came to Abayi. So when Simi came to Abayi, Abayi was very upset. Amrli, he says, Kibay Tre, obviously. You're applying both um, privileges, both shitas, contradictory shitas of Rav and Shmuel. Right? Because <laughs> Rav and Shmuel, well, one of them held the upper ones get, one held the lower one. But you basically employed a trick. You held back the ones upstream and the ones downstream. You applied both Rav and Shmuel. <laughs> that's not, uh, it's not right. V'loi ta'minu abaye l'peri da'ishato. And abaye refused to partake to consume the peris of his field that year because he felt there was, there was some element of dishonesty here. Continues the Gemara, Hanu Bnei. There was a story involving the residents of Bei Charnuch, some sort of town. The Azul Koru Beresha de Shinvasa, Vadrua Veshadua Beshili Nahara. So there was this river called Shinvasa, Shinvasa River. And they had this field alongside this river. So what they did was like this. They um, diverted the Nahar, 
the river into their field on top and uh, you know ran around their field irrigated their fields and all the way in the bottom of their field apparently they were like sort of on a hill on the bottom they redirected the water back to the actual river okay so they pretty much ran the river through their fields very convenient method of watering your field Karu they uh, diverted they did it like a dam but Reish Shimvasa up on top of the river Vajru and they restored it back to its own uh, flow but Shadru and they threw it back they sent it back Bishilinara at the end towards the bottom of the river Asui Loika made that apparently there were farmers who were living even more upstream than the, these Bnei Charmach people and they were complaining to Abayi. Also, Eloi will come in And they said like this. You know what happens when they divert this river, when they sort of slow the flow? There's a backup. <laughs> we're on top and we're suffering from a backup. They're slowing down the flow and they're backing up the water into our fields. Flooding our fields. Amr Lewis Abayi says, okay, easy solution. Karu badayu porto. You know, as this, as this is happening, You know, just uh, dig down a bit your uh, your your section of that river, which is backing up. Get it a bit deeper, so that it doesn't uh, flow over its bank and flood your fields. Um, Amulekal Yavshi Perin. Problem is, we have remember we have ditches and irrigation, you know, channels coming from that river, and if the river is now deeper, right? You know what happens? Koyavshi Peirin, our Peirin, our ditches, dry up. So when the river is, you know, in its capacity, of course, it fills up and everything is flowing well, but what if the water level drops? And if it's deeper than it should be, it's not going to reach up to the, um, the, the irrigation ditches and channels, and they're just going to dry up. The water's not going to get to our fields. So it's not a fair solution. Amr Luhu, Sabai, upon hearing that, turned to the Bnei Charmach, the ones who diverted this whole river, and he says, look, these people have a point. You don't have a right to do this. You're harming them. Zilu, go, slik on Avshaycha Mahasam, remove yourself from this, uh, from this, um, you know, field, from this system, from this uh, diversion. Basically, black it back up, send it back to the, um, to its normal path, that's the fair thing to do. Okay, let's review today's daf. We started with the seder of the uh, aliyahs, the way the Chacham instituted the aliyahs in the Beis Knesses, very specific hierarchy to uh, maintain peace and harmony in the shul. Uh, we discussed the option of writing, of recording a chumish at a time, as well as the Haftairois separately. And the Gemara says when it comes to the Chumashim, uh, it's uh, lacking in, in Kavit Sibur. But when it comes to the uh, Haftairois, the Gemara applied the Pasuk, Esas Lashem Efeit Secha, that, uh, that um, it is allowed in a case of necessity. What about writing a Megillah just for a, a Tinaik, a small section of Torah? That turned to be Machlekes uh, Tanoi. We discussed the big Machlekes regarding how the Torah was recorded. Was it section by section as it came down, as it was uh, happening, or was it Chasuma, written all at once at the end of the 40 years? Certainly there were certain sections written on the day of Hakam Mishkan, sections pertinent to that day. We discussed the, we highlighted the Chashivas of Torah Shal Peh, which requires great effort and toil and Avas Hashem. And we discussed uh, several cases regarding farmers and questions of of uh, uh, prioritizing you know, uh, irrigation. We had Machlokas uh, Rabin Shmuel, whether the uh, fellows upstream can divert or do we give uh, first priority to the fellows downstream. Gumar didn't come out with a clear conclusion called Alam Gavar. We have the story of Abayi's integrity, refused to partake in the fruit that was grown with um, using some sort of a ploy uh, against the other farmers. And we have the story of Bnei Charmach, who diverted 
their river until they were set uh, set back on track by Abaye. Hatzlacha Rabba Psuros Tevez.